10 fragrances that I consider right now to be my current signature scent. Yeah, these are my 10 favorite fragrances at the moment to wear. And there are some of the ones that I've been wearing a lot lately the past couple weeks, the past few months, whatever it is. I love these 10 fragrances and I recommend any of these 10 to any one of you guys. So yeah, without further ado, let's jump right into it. Yo, what's up guys, Timmy here. Welcome back to Imagine Scent here on this channel we upload once a month. <laughs> it, yeah, it's pretty bad, man. I've been really inconsistent lately because uh, life has been really, really busy, but I will make an effort to upload more. I promise this time, like for real. So yeah, the first fragrance we have here is a very, very, very impressive cheapy fragrance. This one is Lacoste Pour Homme. This is really, really nice. I've been enjoying this one a lot lately, especially since the weather is cooling down a bit. The plum in here is really nice. There's a lot of freshness in here as well. It's a really nice balance between the sweetness, the fruitiness, and the freshness, which makes this fragrance extremely versatile while still being unique at the same time as attractive. So for the price that you can get this for, 20 something dollars to have all those quality in it, plus, a decent performance at the same time. It is a really, really, really good pickup. And the smell itself is, man, it's just attractive. I like this one a lot for the evening time and maybe sometime during the daytime as well if it's not too hot out. The plum in here, again, the freshness, really, really nice choice. So yeah, Lacoste Perome, 20 something dollars. I've been wearing this one quite a bit. Next one here is one that I used to not like at all, but it's grown on me to the point now that is one of my favorite fragrances to just pick up whenever I want to smell like um, a little bit more high class, I guess. So yeah, this one is Chanel's Platinum Ego East. Yes, has a really nice bright barbershoppy feel, the lavender. Man, there's some classiness about this one. Classy, gentleman, clean, barbershoppy. It is a really, really good fragrance when you just want to have a little bit of a luxurious vibe to yourself, whether you're wearing this one to the office, you're wearing this one just out and about on like a summer or spring day, or even a fall day, winter day, if you will. I mean, there's really no season associated with this one in my personal opinion, because this is a fragrance that I would wear personally indoors, like in the office, to someone else's house, to a get together, stuff like that. So I would not wear this fragrance outdoors because the performance is just not that great for outdoors. So it's an all year round fragrance. It smells luxurious, it's classy. You can wear this one dressed up. You can wear this one a little bit dressed down if you want to do that, a clean white t-shirt that works just as well. Amazing fragrance right here. And the more my taste develops, the more I actually give this fragrance a chance, the more I fall in love with it. So if you happen to not like Platinum Egoist right now, it's probably because you only gave it one try on your hand, you smelled up clothes and you didn't like it. I would say give this fragrance a fair chance, wear it a few times, smell it in the sillage, and you might be just like me and fall head over heels over this classic-ish fragrance. Next one right here, we have another cheapie on the list. This one is Mont Blanc Starwalker, and this one blew my mind into smithereens. It's just so fantastic of a fragrance. This is one that I would say that every guy should own in their collection. I don't care what you like. I don't care if you like fresh. I don't care if you like sweet. I don't care if you like summer, spring. It does not matter what you like. You need to at least smell this fragrance and have it in your collection because one, it's so versatile. Two, it's easy to put on, super attractive. Three, the price is unbeatable. And four, it's unique at the same time. I've not smelled anything like Mont Blanc Starwalker. I mean, you can fight me in the comments if you want to, but you're not gonna find a fragrance that smells like uh, Mont Blanc Starwalker. It's just unique in its own right and it comes at a very affordable price. So really, really like this one. I'm wearing this one a lot and every time I wear it out, I feel this sense of confidence. I feel this sense of just pure joy whenever I put on this fragrance. So yeah, highly, highly recommend it. The only downside to this one, you guessed it, is the performance not the best performer in the world, but for 20 something dollars with all the other good qualities about it, I really don't mind that this doesn't last as long. Next fragrance we have right here is Tom Ford's Noir EDP. Now this is a really cozy, comforting scent. Every time I put this one on, I always feel like I have like a weighted blanket around me, just wrapped around, keeping me just really nice and snug. And I feel just, Relax. Relax while at the same time oddly luxurious. I mean, I feel like I'm in like, like I said again, a weighted blanket, maybe like a Gucci 
brand or Versace weighted blanket. It just feels like that. It gives you comfort at the same time as making you feel like uh, you own a yacht. So that's the best, best way to describe this fragrance for me when it comes to just the vibe of it all. I love this thing a lot. And for those of you who have not tried this fragrance, I'm sure not a lot of you have because it's really not that popular of a fragrance, but it is a really, really good one. No joke. You should definitely check this one out if you're looking for something that's just super comforting and at the same time luxurious for the fall and winter. Next fragrance here is an absolute no-brainer. I've been wearing this one ever since I got it from, you know, late spring all the way down till now. Deeply in love with this one. This one is Versace. Poor Om. Yeah, I ran through quite a bit of the bottle as well. And fun fact, it is one of my most complimented fragrance of 2020, mainly due to the fact that I wear the heck out of it and also because it's just extremely mass appealing. This one sits alongside another Versace fragrance actually that's gotten me a lot of compliments this year. I mean, Versace just know what they're doing, man. They know how to make extremely mass appealing fragrances. That's their thing, and they do it extremely, extremely well. So yeah, Versace Barome, extremely fresh, invigorating scent for all year round. You can wear this anytime, you'll get compliments. No one is gonna dislike this fragrance off you unless you overspray, and even that is hard to overspray this fragrance. So yeah, extremely safe, extremely mass appealing, long lasting, high compliment getting. What more do you want? Next one right here is another Versace fragrance. I figure let's get them all the way. This one is another one that got me a lot of compliments in 2020. Arrow's Flame. I mean, <laughs> like I said, 70 to 80% of the time I wear Arrow's Flame, I will get a compliment. Given that I'm around people, of course, I will get a compliment 70 and 80% of the time. And that statistic still holds very, very true. I mean, it's so freaking insane how that holds up. I mean, a lot of fragrances, you guys all know, don't really get you the compliments that you want. Sometimes you get it every now and then. Sometimes you don't get it at all, even though you're wearing the most mass appealing fragrance of all time. So a 70 to 80% chances of getting compliment for me, those numbers are insane and they're absolutely true. So yeah, Versace Aeros Flame just works off my skin. I love wearing it just for the fact that I get a lot of attention alone. The smell and stuff is really nice too. I like the smell, I don't love the smell. What I love about this fragrance, like I said again, is the amount of attention that it can garner no matter where I am. Next fragrance right here, we have a really old, yeah, an old one that is maybe due to be discontinued soon. I don't know, I mean, it's still hanging around, but it's not that readily available in stores anymore. Yeah, this one is YSL Opium, the old toilet version. The EDP version, sadly, that one's gone, but this one, ha, oh, so, so, so good. This one came highly recommended to me from Ashton at Sense. He says he loves this fragrance. It's one of the best ones out there. It's so good, it's a hidden gem. It's all the good and none the bad, and when I smell this fragrance, I'm like, yeah, I agree with everything <laughs> that he told me. This one is a definite 1000% hidden gem that a lot of people miss because it's so old, it's been around for so long, not a lot of people talk about it anymore. But to me, it's so, so worth talking about. Highly recommend it from me, definite hidden gem. It's sad that this one might go away soon, but yeah, grab this one while you still can. If you like black currant, like I said, it's really nice. The black currant here does not come across like an Aventus type of black currant or anything like that. It comes across a little bit more old school. It definitely has some more floral aspect to it. It smells like the fragrance from the past, but it holds really well in today's market as well. I mean, it does not smell overly dated. That's what I like about it. It still has that mass appeal, a little bit of modernness with a touch of vintage appeal. Really great fragrance right here. YSL Opium. Next one we have right here, Guerlain L'Homme Ideal Extreme Plum Tobacco, masculine version of the original EDT and the EDP. This one is my favorite from the line, hands down. It smells incredible. There's some piercing dryness about it, some fruitiness mixed with that dark tobacco that cuts through the fragrance, some spices in here as well. Extremely, extremely well done fragrance, really nicely balanced as well. It smells absolutely up to par with the Guerlain standard of quality. If you guys know Guerlain really sits up there with Dior and Chanel in terms of quality, and this one holds up to that really, really well. This one is also the most versatile one of the bunch. You can wear this one all season long. It's a great signature scent for any occasion you want to wear it to, whether that being to work, to clubs, to bars, to date, to just 
overall any occasion that you can think of you can put this one on if you like a tobacco fragrance that's not too sweet that's not too deep not too um pipe tobacco -y, if you will you will enjoy this one if you like plum in any given way the plum in here is really nice it's dried and it doesn't smell too close to any plum that i smell on the market so far so yeah really high quality fragrance right here love everything about it guerlain l'homme ideal extreme the next one right here might cause some people to leave the video and unsubscribe and uh, to those people i will say thank you for watching this long <laughs> so this next one here is dior sauvage yeah i've been wearing dior sauvage a lot and mainly because I just love it. I really like Dior Sauvage. I mean, I don't care about all the other blue fragrances that are on the market, really. Dylan Blue is good, but uh, I don't like it as much as Dior Sauvage. Luna Rosa Carbon is good, but uh, it just doesn't have that punch that Dior Sauvage has. And Aqua Atlantique is some. Um, it's just not on par with Dior Sauvage and a lot of other blue fragrances out on the market as well are not on par with Dior Sauvage in my personal opinion. The only thing that stands up to Dior Sauvage in terms of blue fragrances I would say is Y Live by Yves Saint Laurent, YEDP, Blue de Chanel for example. Those fragrances stand toe to toe with Dior Sauvage for me. So yeah, love this fragrance right here. No other derivative or interpretation of Dior Sauvage does me justice as much as the original. So yeah, ET is my favorite. EDP is good, but not enough freshness. I mean, if I'm wearing a blue fragrance, a shower gel fragrance, I want uber, uber freshness because if I want depth and complexity, I would not pick a blue fragrance. I'm just gonna throw that out there right now. So yeah, when I wear a blue fragrance, I do want extreme freshness. So EDT is my favorite. I don't think I need to say anything else about Dior Sauvage. Performance amazing, uber mass appealing, and um, uber versatile. Yeah, it's just a really great dumb reach fragrance. So yeah, Dior Sauvage. Been wearing this one a lot. Last fragrance on this list is Prada Lome Absolute. You guys probably saw this one coming. This is, after all, my second and maybe soon to be my number one favorite designer of all time. Like I said many, many times before, this one fits my personality the best. It has dry cardamom, dry iris, and those two notes are so strong. They're almost neck and neck in terms of potency. Both of them combined just gives this fragrance a lot of tenacity, while at the same time, a lot of dark elements in the background as well to balance that off a little bit. It's fresh, it's spicy, it's dark, and overall, all just super 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 sexy fragrance i love wearing this one and it's one of those fragrances that 100 if i run out of it i'm buying another bottle so yeah i'm not gonna say much else about this one um performance really good i guess that's the last thing i'll say about it so yeah prada Loam Absolute, my number two right now favorite fragrance on the market, designer-wise. All right, guys, that is it for this video today. Thank you so much for watching. Leave down in the comment section below um, your signature scent right now, I guess. Which fragrances have you been enjoying a lot lately? And uh, with that being said, I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out and bye.